So you want to make sure it's coming after me with my aluminum filled briefcase. Ooh, the wall of wrestling. Yes. Is it? Well, oops, oops. There we go. There's the wall of wrestling, folks. Oh, well, welcome again to another show featuring me, Hobo Tom. And this is a Hobo and Girlfriend show. Hobo and Friend show. Hobo and. Where's my cat at? I'm not even Hobo and his cat. Darn it. But I'm here to talk about Monday Night Raw. And before I do that, I have two video dedications. Uh, two people put up a whole bunch of chats. Phoenix Random. This briefcase box goes out to you. And Epson Via. Holy shit. Holy shit. That video goes out to you. And based on a little bit of my predictions, let's do the final tally. So I chose, let's see here, there were 10 matches. Let's see here. There are one, two, four, five, six. I got six out of 10 right. That means I must be inside the head. One, Stephanie McMahon. Means I'm getting better because for a long time I was a 50 50 booker. But let's talk about some Monday Night Raw because there was a lot of good last night with Money in the Bank. Um, probably the, the best match, again, as I, as I called it, the match of the night was Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles. The women's Money in the Bank match was also really fun. Yeah, I get that surf and turf. Men's Money in the Bank, taking a look at it the day after, was still fun. I think I I was a little kind to it. I gave it a surf and turf, mainly because, one, I do like surprises. I don't care who's surprising. Surprise entrance. And of all the spots, all those spots they put themselves through, all those ladders that got destroyed, all that precious aluminum that got wasted, oh. I digress. But um, I think the low point, I think the lowest thing was the Samoa Joe match, Lars Sullivan, Roman Reigns. Wow, that does sound like the low points. It's terrible. So we'll see what happens tomorrow on SmackDown. But this is Monday Night Raw. And Raw starts off. Um, Brock Lesnar comes out. He gets booed. Just carries his little briefcase like a boombox. He enjoys those booze. I don't know if I think that's kind of the, the um, heel heat too. He loves it though. Um, with that, again, Paul Heyman of course talks a lot. Crowd. <laughs> oh wow, the crowd was just booing him the whole time. Seth Rollins comes out, of course, he gets cheered, <laughs> and then. Paul's retort. Oh, wow. This is so good. <laughs> he, he wishes he, he could be his girlfriend, Becky. Because at least she made the main event at WrestleMania. Oh! Slap. And then, of course, Kofi came down as the 
It just shouts, wild card! Oh, that's when I got old. It was just kind of a whole bunch of stuff. Um, then we have Sami Zayn. He, he, he's just trying to talk to Lashley because he has to face Ron Strowman. And for a change, there was no tag team match, which is good. They're switching up things. Because God knows this Ron needed it. And the opening match, Sami Zayn, who's definitely not happy, versus Braun Strowman. Run, Sammy, run. Run, Sammy, run. I have to do the show a little bit quick because I do have to get to the gym. I got fat over the weekend. And today. Um, but Braun literally just faces Sammy out of the ring. Braun and Bobby Lashley just stare down at each other. Because those two are going to be facing each other at Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia. I'm going to see if I can provide some coverage for that as well. Because that's June 7th, I think. Not us right around then. So wherever that Friday is. And then, of course... Oh, yeah, the LED ring post lights were back. But only for a short time. It's weird. I'll, I'll, I'll address that later. Um... But for the most part, it was a glorified squash match. It's a little more entertaining, though. But knowing the two people involved, Sami Zayn and Braun Strowman, you know what was you know the end product. You know what's going to happen at the end. You, and Braun Strowman did win, by the way. It's a can of soup. Eight though. Tomorrow I have to get up at seven. I have to get my new office chair. New office chair. New office chair. And then let's see. It was you know a whole bunch of who was that? Oh, it was a uh, Lars Sullivan came out again versus. Lucha House Party. I'm like, Lars, no HP. Yeah, Lucha House Party got the upper hand for a little bit. This wasn't even a match. Uh, kind of a rehash of what happened last last night, except for the Lucha House Party got a little bit more offense in. Again, they did the triple drop kick, which eventually did get Lars Sullivan out of the ring. Still haven't heard him speak. Um, eventually, Lars comes out and squashes all three of them. The only good news is Listo and... And the leak, and not Eligero. Lindsay Dorado, yes. Cleso and Lindsay Dorado saved Grand Metal Leak from a top rope superplex by Lars Sullivan after he got a free accident once. Yeah, kind of same thing happened. Ah, uh, whoa. Black. What's black? It was a piece of toast. I mean, doing the same thing, getting the same results. Isn't that insanity? It just has to be careful. Then again, there's a, U a recap of the Universal Championship. And then we have the next match. Probably, oh wow, this was the best match of the night. Um, we had Ricochet. Versus Cesaro. And just a little historical fact. These two actually face each other in Chikara. Of all places. Everyone everyone in the WWE I think has gone through Chikara at least once. Or at least on, at least a lot of the indie stars are bringing up. I know AJ Styles was in Chikara. Um, Cesaro was in Chikara under, under um, Casleo something. Ricochet was always Ricochet. I don't know how he kept that name. Wow. But that's just an interesting fact. Chikara. Chikara. Princess Peach is a slut. Delirious is still number one in my book. But it's pretty cool because actually Cesaro got a new Titan Tron, so he's no longer with the bar. I, I actually do like his new music. I like this new Titan Tron. It's a lot better than that kind of gimmicky theme with that kind of gimmicky James Bond where he did Terry Wear suit. 
he just comes out as a true wrestler. I think he, I think he likes it better. Um, Ricochet, however, is not as strong as Cesaro. Um, he just he still gets tossed around. But Cesaro is just so strong, and he he caught Ricochet, and then just like threw him. I mean, he was just getting tossed all over the place. That was fun though. Eventually, uh, they do get back in the ring, and Ricochet goes off the ropes. I mean, the one spot where Cesaro threw him was the back body drop. Oh, wow, did Ricochet get up there, and he saw the presence of mind to realize, I better flip and land on my back. Row. This is really going to hurt. Then Cesaro I whipped him against the ropes a second time, and he was going to do... He's going to do the pop up again, except for Ricochet landed on Cesaro's shoulders. It probably seemed longer than it was, but he was there for a good couple seconds. And then he did a backflip off his shoulders. And then, of course, he continued to do his flippy, flippy stuff. Amazing. He did get caught with the European uppercut. He did that Gorilla, gorilla Press Backbreaker. Oh, that looked good. And then, of course, finish it off with the gosh neutralizer. This was the match of the night, though, because this was amazing. This was a good surf and turf match. Even the crowd realized that because they were chanting, This is awesome. I have to think of a good title. What is it? The, the brief box. The brief box in stereo languages. I'll get to that. Then we have an AJ Styles interview, and Baron Corbin shows up, interviews him, and very simply, they just run each other down. Then oh, you want to see a slap in the face? Wow, that was good though. AJ needs to slap people around. There's no way Baron Corbin could ever pull off any New Japan style match the way AJ Styles could. Uh, then there was a Roman Reigns promo. Shane McMahon comes down. Drew McIntyre comes out. And this is going to set up um, Shane versus Roman Reigns at the Super Showdown. Uh, and then it's Becky One Belt. We'll get to that later, folks. Tranquilo. And then another really good match. I actually couldn't believe this one. It was the Usos versus The Revival. And they actually did this like a true wrestling match. It was so good. Revival. Oh, um, well, they're not wearing hashtag F FTR anymore. Um, oh, shoot. I should have wrote down what they said on trunk Trunks, but but it's, it's, it's a lot better. Again, just so much better than that. That was Ben. I mean, Dash. He just shoves Uso into the other Uso. I mean, they really try and take advantage of their wrestling acumen. And he drops the leg. Uh, Dash shoves him and drops the leg on Uso number one. I always forget. I'm sorry. But then drops the leg, goes for a quick pin. The outside work by the Revival, they isolate the one Uso outside the ring in their corner. Though. They just start to beat on him. Of course, the other guy is saying, hey, hey, get that guy. And of course, the, rest the ref has to turn his back. To what the revival is doing, but again, very classic tag team work. Though I appreciate that. That's the old school '80s rock and wrestling tag team. That's fun stuff. Uh, again, they pull off that, 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 that pass off suplex, which is so good. Again, the tag team work. Not only what the revival does, but what the Usos do is good. If Vince would let these people wrestle the way they can. Wow, WWE number one! It wouldn't be Liverpool's number one. It would be WWE number one. <laughs> I'll remember that one. Um, again, the blind tags by both. Usos can also tag team wrestle, too. I mean, just so good. I mean, the high spots. Again, the Usos use a blind tag. They have a super kick party. The revival went back to the no flips, just fists. Because. Dash was just punching people. Again, throw it back to the old school wrestling. I enjoy it. And the Revival actually, in this fact, pick up a win. Even though it was a little bit dirty because Dash did grab the trunks, there was no Shatter Machine. They have to bring the Shatter Machine back. That was fun to watch. That and the Magic Killer. Again, this was 
But this is what happens when you can let wrestlers wrestle. And this was a really good quality surf and turf match. And we get to a backstage segment. And this is growing on me a little bit. So we have normal Nikki is getting run down by Alexa Bliss because Nikki lost. Yeah, she touched the the, the, the briefcase, but she lost. If I will come back, they just go nuts. They're partying. They're like, ah, we beat the Usos. We beat the Usos. We beat the Usos. Yeah, yeah. Started like touching and poke Alexa Bliss, and she just looked purely annoyed. Maybe she knows I was some girlfriends because she's a single woman, folks. Um, then you have a Firefly Funhouse, which just went to its freaky thing. Um, just shows Bray Wyatt uh, with a bunch of kids. The kids had the weird writing on their face. They look, had that very blank expression on their face. And you see him in his scary clown mask. We'll see where this goes. <laughs> and then, not the best thing. Not the best match. So I'm not going to give it a rating, but to me, the most entertaining thing was the moment of bliss. So Alexa Bliss, it's her moment of bliss talk, talk segment, and she brought up Becky Lynch. I'm being honest here, Nikki Cross <laughs> joins her. Nikki Cross is so short and tiny. I mean, I know they have the raised barstool type chairs, but to see Nikki Cross literally hop up into it it's like when you're seven years old and you're allowed to sit at like the adult table and you have like your feet, you can't see my feet because my feet are on the floor but like your feet kind of dangle from the chairs and that's what Nikki did and she looks so small in that big chair the scary thing is Nikki Cross is also shorter than Alexa Bliss I never realized that Nikki Cross looks cute without all the makeup all the crazy stuff on just blank face Nikki's pretty cute. Make sure there's no large Scottish person behind me. No break me. Big demo. Um so Alexa wants her cup of coffee. <laughs> Nikki's so confused. She's like, huh? Me? Me go get coffee? Her assistant comes out with two literally two mugs of coffee. Not even the Starbucks thing, but they actually had like ceramic cups. Um, one, one for Nikki, and one for. <laughs> and Nikki had no idea what to do with it. Like, she just takes her coffee, cups it, sips it. And Nikki's like, huh, oh, what's this? Like, yeah. oh, it's so good. This is like kind of normal Nikki just, just being quirky. Ah, it's not normal Nikki, it's like quirky Nikki. <laughs> And then she gets kicked out of the chair because, of course, Becky Lynch Lynch comes in. So she goes to the one side of Alexa Bliss, standing literally right at her shoulder. And and Alexa Bliss is creeped out. She's like, go over there. So she went to the other shoulder. She's just like, okay, go go sit in there. And then she just goes to the table, put her hands on the table, just kind of leans on on the table while they talk to Becky Lynch. And (laughs) Becky just looks so confused. It was so great just to see her natural facial expressions. I think Becky Lynch was trying to hide her laughter. And then the Iconics came out. Started to run down on Becky One Belt. Um, And then Lacey Evans, of course, came out. And for the life of me, this is what I have yet to fully understand. I have absolutely no clue between... Alexa Bliss talking normal American English. Nikki Cross with her Scottish accent. Becky, her Irish accent. The Iconics with their Australian accent. And Lacey Evans with a horrible Southern twang. I have no idea how any of those six women could under- could fully understand what they were saying to each other. Because I couldn't. And then this uh, leads up to a match. And Becky just says, you know what? We're going to have a match. I'm going to prove this once for all. Nikki's like, 
Oh, can Nikki play? I'll be your tag team partner. And, and then Alexa Bliss is like, well, I don't want to wrestle. And very simply, like you said, you know what? You can just stand there and look pretty. <laughs> that was funny, though. And then you have uh, Mick Foley comes in the back with the mystery belt. We'll, we'll get into uh, he sees a club, EC3, Mojo Rally, um, No Way Jose, Cedric Alexander, some mystery woman. In- I forget who's Cedric Staten. Some mystery black female wrestler. I have no, it wasn't Naomi. It was someone else. There's all talking. Titus O'Neill's there. Um, Again, the six women tag match featured it was Becky Lynch, Nikki Cross, Alexa Bliss versus the iconics of Billy Ray, Peyton Royce, and Lacey Evans. And wow, look at that booty on Billy Kay. Yeah, I do need a girlfriend. I know Billy Kay is still single, I think. Peyton Royce is engaged to, I forget his real name. Ty Dillon. I don't know what's up with Lacey. Becky's with Seth. Alexa's single. It's this guy. And Nikki Cross is married to Big Demo. But <laughs> Billy Kay did nothing but talk the whole match. I have no idea. Nikki, I don't think, could understand a single world word Billy Kay said. God knows I couldn't. I mean, Billy Kay was just shouting out her like the whole match. He has a pair of lungs. I had no idea what she was saying, but it was it was loud. Uh, it was a fun match. Um, really, the whole thing was Lacey Evans didn't want to face Becky. The Iconics really didn't care who they faced. They just wanted to, to beat up Nikki for a while. Um, eventually, Becky does... Thing. She gets a hot tag from Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross goes Nikki Cross. Well, actually, it really subdued Nikki Cross. So it's not as good, but kind of the quirky Nikki might be a better Nikki. We'll see. Um, again, uh, Becky actually finished off. I think Billy, I forget if it was Billy Carey Payton Weiss was one of the iconics with a second rope leg drop. I don't know if that was a finisher, but that was good, though. That's all I needed. Um, she won. Her team won. Alexa Bliss is just like, yeah, she's just, Alexa Bliss was on the whole time outside with a cup of coffee in her hand. She didn't even get on the, on the ring apron. Um, I, it was fun. I mean, this, only because I was, only because I was thoroughly entertained by all the antics. Just for the entertainment value alone, it's a cheeseburger match. And then Mick Foley comes out, um, shows the new belt. Once it was green, I'm like, oh no, it's going to be that awful Saudi Arabia belt. And it was actually worse. It was, or it is now the 24-7 belt. And to be honest... That's the loser, loser locker room belt. Because he literally left in the ring. Everyone in the loser locker room came out for like the super undercard locker room. Started to fight each other for it. At the end, Titus O'Neil was the last one to grab it. I guess the one thing is it, it, it teased a breakup of a club because they both had it until they both got beat up. Um, Drake Maverick almost got it once. Titus O'Neil. Threw him off, threw him out of the ring, picked it up. Um, on Titus's way to the backstage area, he got jumped by Robert Roode. Robert Roode's the new champion for the 24-7 network belt. I guess the only good news from that is that anyone from Raw, SmackDown, 205 Live, NXT, and NXT UK can challenge for that belt anytime. It's kind of like the hardcore title without the hardcore rules. 
if people thought that red belt was ugly looking, this belt's pretty bad. I mean, the, it was. I mean, Mick Foley came out, showed the belt, and he got booed out of the ring. The <laughs> crowd's going awful, awful, and that kind of like zapped all the energy out of Raw very quickly. So I guess because that was a match, geez, that was a piece of toast. We have the Miz versus Drew McIntyre, and for some reason they changed the whole setup during the third hour. I don't know why. I don't know if Raw is going to go to two hours or what's going to happen because the LED ring post went out. They lowered the lighting, and once that lighting was lowered, you could really see where they put the tarps across the seats. I'll tell you what, that stadium got empty really quick. Or it was really quick. I mean, listen, this is New York in a major stadium. It's not the San Francisco Center where they have all kinds of technical issues. So that shouldn't be happening. I mean, it was a fun match. I mean, Drew's just way too strong for the Miz. Um, I wonder if people laugh only because when they saw that belt, they're like, this is nonsense. Or if it's just a 9 o'clock hour. Those schools getting out soon, so I don't know. Um, Miz, I mean, he he goes to target the knees. Oh, the one thing, and I forgot to mention this during the match, but they have that live mic because Uso called one of the revival "Hit me, bitch." That was good. I love it when they trash talk, like when you can hear the trash talk. He hit him too. I like that. At least it makes this the the spot sound organic. This thing hit me. Hit me, bitch. You or 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 was it you, bitch? Pop. That's cool though. Um, Miz put the figure four and again against the taller, stronger guy. He wants to go go after the legs. Drew McIntyre. The figure four doesn't finish off anyone nowadays though, which is kind of sad. I and mean, Ric Flair must be really. Said about that. Um, eventually Shane does interfere once he, he gets him out. Um, that spine buster of Drew looks great though. He, that has to be a top ten spine buster. Arn Anderson has the best spine buster. Rick Rude has a darn good. Um, no, um, Robert Rude has a darn good spine buster too. He also had a really good spine buster. Carl Anderson. Maybe this might be the best. There's not, it's definitely up in that top 10 area. Um, again, the figure four, he tried to get... No one taps the figure four anymore. Um, Shane eventually does interfere. Cost him his match. Drew McIntyre hits the Claymore. It was still a pretty fun match, though. Again, another good cheeseburger match. And then I was getting worried, and actually it kind of upset me because I think there was only like 15, 20 minutes left in the show, and they still had the main event, and then 10 minutes of it, R-Truth comes out. He has a referee in his car, and he bonks the head of Robert Roode off his trunk, pins him. Our truth is now the new 24-7 champion, which I guess is good because this is like, he's like a com comedy belt. So we'll, we'll see how long that belt stays around. Um, Seth and Kofi come out because um, they team up against Slashley and Corbin. Uh, it's all of a sudden they changed the rules because there was no DQ, and, and Kofi's like, oh, what do you mean no DQ? I and mean, Seth doesn't even make it to the ring before, he, before he's jumped by Lashley and Corbin, so Kofi has to go run out and beat him. Uh, it's just really a, a beatdown of the champs. Um, 
again, it was the Arabian Gut Buster by Kofi. That was pretty cool. And Arabian Gut Buster is just like, like a double leg drop to the stomach. So that's pretty cool. Again, he did top rope flip splash, which is awesome still. He does that. Um, he did. He also pulled off the trust fall from the top to the to the floor, which is that's a long way to fall. You well, you better hope you're getting caught. Uh, Seth gets paired in the office chairs. That was a pretty cool spot because there wasn't no DQ. Eventually, Seth brings in the chair. Um, he finally tosses his shirt off towards the end of the match as the shirt face shirt toss off. Uh, eventually, Seth does win. He stomps Baron Corbin. Oh no, Kofi hits the um, Trouble in Paradise onto Baron Corbin. Seth and Kofi win. Lashley cleans house. And then Brock Lesnar teases a cash in. And it was a ham sandwich of a match. And that was Monday Night Raw. I mean, it had its high points, but like the way it's been recently, the low points have really are the things that have stood out. So a couple of programming notes. Tomorrow is going to be SmackDown on the 25th. Again, I have to see what my work schedule is because I don't know what I'm doing Sunday. Um, the 25th, you're definitely getting a show from Daytona Beach. Hopefully I can get that picture for Candice LeRae signed and I can be like a schoolgirl at a boy band concert. Probably on Sunday, unless I'm working. I don't know. I might not be working that day. I'm going to do a recap of Double or Nothing because that's also on the 25th. But the live show takes precedent. So I might be meeting up with someone. It would be good. Then Monday is a double show because I have to put to oh wow I still have to put together that card. I have to put together the card for the Memorial Memorial Day Madness from the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. And then so it's Memorial Day D B B W L or L W and then Monday Night Raw. Probably have some kind of tribute for Memorial Day, too. But I always do that. And so does WWE. Uh, Tuesday night, SmackDown. I'm up in the air if I'm going to do anything about Impact. The new app I got, I can. And we'll see where we go from there. 